Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Another one of these threads from the shithole subreddit. Another write-up. A multi-paragraph write-up. Making a point. Taking a stand. A virtuous, admirable, valiant stand on behalf of others. He is a hero. He's a protector. He is the one, the shield, that stands between the vulnerable and the weak and those who would seek to harm them and take them down and destroy them. So we're going to give him a chance to make his case and we're going to see how this stands up. This has 700 upvotes, which is quite a lot. It's not the most we've ever seen, not even close. But 700 upvotes on 74% upvoted, so you're looking at a thousand ratings on this post and three quarters of them are of approval. So most people approve of this. Most people on this subreddit saw this title, clicked on it, presumably read it, and then thought, oh, you know what, this is a good post. I'm going to click upvote on this. And we have 200 comments. So let's see what he's got. Let's see what this mastermind has mused for us today. Just another one. I don't think he's got a habit of doing this. I think it's just yet another in a long line that have laid out ostensibly cringy as fuck threads on this place. Alright, let's go. Please be respectful to the developers after the roster reveal. He goes on. This game has been in the works for a long time and was still delayed. Both previous titles were gorgeous and almost impossibly detailed. Ugh. <laughs> Five years of work from a AAA studio. They've scaled up and they now have a thousand staff members or close to it. I think 800 staff in Creative Assembly. And they're the biggest game developer in the UK, one of the biggest in Europe. Compare that to 2004 when Creative Assembly were presumably just a few dozen people at most and they made Rome Total War. I don't think it's that impressive. I don't think they've pulled off any real feats here, especially when you consider the fact that the game is such a, a reiteration. The systems are not very impressive. The way the gameplay is implemented is not very ambitious. I really don't understand how people can really be impressed with this. See, when people leave comments like this, I get the impression that they just have not played any of the older games. They were not there back in 2004, 2006. Even Shogun 2 in 2011 and Fall of the Samurai with how well implemented parrot guns and Armstrongs, the sound effects, the visual effects, the polish. These games had aspects to them that were definitely impressive at the time. And I would argue to this day Shogun 2 still looks better than Warhammer 1 and 2. And I can't possibly omit the fact that it's not even two titles. He's given uh, so much credit here. This is one game being sold three times and people are starting to catch on to that, it seems like. It's starting to get traction. It's becoming acceptable to point out that Warhammer 2 and 3 are just glorified expansions. So, in the span of five years, between 2016 and 2022, or six years, they've managed one game that's essentially just been resold multiple times and been built on a little bit, perhaps. If you were to think 2000 to 2006, you had, in that six-year time span, Shogun 1, Medieval 1, Rome Total War, Medieval 2. That is a lot of good games. That's a lot of effort, a lot of quality. That is volume. That six-year time period achieved a hell of a lot more in a lot less time than what we have had in the past six years. It's incomparable. Look, this is just a deluded statement. I really don't understand the frame of reference that people come from to say stuff like this. It's just completely divorced from reality. He goes on. Crunch is such a massive problem in the industry. I don't know why you're bringing up crunch here. It's true that crunch is a problem, but why bring this up right now? This seems like an attempt to just engender sympathy. It's, he's saying this is his second line. His second line and he's bringing up crunch. There's no reason to do that. It's just a plea for sympathy. 
for others, unless of course this is one of the CEO devs that are just posting with a sock account, which would be the most ridiculous thing. Crunch is a massive problem in the industry and I have very little doubt that many of the people working on Warhammer 3 are putting in 10 plus hour days. Yeah, so... <laughs> a lot of people are putting in 10 plus hour days. And this is in a post-Covid era where you can do that from home. Like, you don't even have to get out your pyjamas. I don't think people working on Warhammer 3 are having a particularly hard time right now. That's all I'm going to say. I think for the past year or two, game developers have had quite an easy time with not even having to go into a studio. You get up, put up your PC, launch Zoom, launch Slack... I don't think there's a hell of a lot going on that's making this a really stressful job right now for game developers. It's ridiculous that you would complain about crunch and try and use that to attack internet commenters that are expecting better games and aren't attacking developers and publishers themselves. Because this is the strange thing here. People are attacking, presumably, see if there's any attacking going on. It is a horde of internet gamer nerds attacking a developer and they just say Creative Assembly or CA. Nobody is singling out individual fucking people. People are shitting on Creative Assembly and you're bringing up crunch here. So you're attempting to engender sympathy for developers by attacking random typers instead of attacking the entities and the systems responsible for crunch. You've managed to do something that always happens on this shithole subreddit. You've completely reversed the narrative People are shitting on CA for making substandard games, subpar games. You are shitting on those people for crunch implicitly when you should be on their side and attack CA for crunch. So this is already a train wreck and we're not even past the second sentence. A lot of people are IMO disproportionately upset about small details about the game's roster. That may be the case because... The way I see it is that these games are fucked in terms of the systems, from a systems perspective. The way the gameplay is implemented, the way the player interacts with the games, the considerations that the player has while they're playing are completely fucked. I would not be complaining about tiny details. I would be complaining, as I have done for the past year, about deep systemic problems with the game and with the philosophy of the developers and with the kind of game they're trying to make, and with the kind of people they're trying to sell to. I would not think to nitpick trivialities when the game is just completely fucked on the whole. I wouldn't do that unless I was making some other point, like I was trying to give examples of shortcuts being taken, and I would be using those tiny details that are gone wrong to substantiate that. But that would not be the point in itself that there is a tiny omission or a lacking detail. It seems like complaining about a splinter in your eye when there's a log in it. If a building is falling down and is just completely structurally fucked, you don't complain about a little bit of dust, you know? An example is the whole Zinch Chaos Warrior debacle. I don't really understand this and I couldn't really possibly truly understand it because I just don't care about this kind of shit. But... From what it seems to me, they try to recycle assets, like an asset flip. So they would take a model, change the hue and the saturation or the colour balance or something, and then slap a label on it and claim it's a different unit, which is something they've been doing for years. This is why I complained so much about the fallacy of Total War's unit diversity, and I made that video explaining that if the gameplay doesn't change between units, then it's not really different units, it's just trivialities. Obviously you can call units by different names, but if you don't acknowledge them differently with your gameplay, it's just fucking meaningless. And no real-time strategy or real-time tactics scene. Have I ever seen such a problem where people can be so easily duped and impressed by simply relabeling and reskinning units? and passing them off as if it's a meaningful differentiation. If you have two units and they function exactly the same way while playing the game, even though they have different names and look different, I consider them to be the same unit and I think that it's a failure of game design. And that's what seems to have happened here. 
But of course we haven't got the game yet to see how the gameplay is. So we've got people complaining about a reskin when the bigger problem is the fact that they're not going to play differently and it's really obvious that they're not going to play differently. And this is why you have to really appeal to things like proper unit differentiation in terms of the systems, orthogonal unit differentiation. Google that and watch those GDC conference talks if you don't understand that stuff. He goes on, Can we take a step back and consider if them recolouring pre-existing models for one or two units and the six plus new factions we're getting on launch, one of which is completely new in the universe, is really such a big deal? Of course, what they're complaining about is trivial, but the bigger problems that it demonstrates are really, really fucking bad. They are lazy and they will cut corners. It's like I said at the end of my video about the siege rework. They didn't go over to Warhammer to make Total War games in order to make the most ambitious and the best possible games. They went over there because they could get the most money for the least effort. This shit here, as always, is a completely ruthless pecuniary decision. They're just trying to save money and they don't care about the consequences. They're not going to care about this because, as I've said, this is an extremely soft fan base. And look at this, 700 upvotes. So they can cut a corner and then someone will post a really cloying thread. And that's the word, cloying. And he will get 700 upvotes on it. And then all the people that are complaining have been completely undermined by this disgusting, cloying, bullshit post and they got away with it because that's what actually matters. All that actually matters in this situation is the quality of the games and are the games good. Is this helping these games be good? No, the people that are complaining about the problems with the games are helping the games be good. This guy is undermining their efforts. He is subverting their efforts. He is pushing back and attempting to fragment and confuse and smokescreen and misdirect and mislead. And this is the sad thing. And he's doing it all for upvotes, fucking internet points. It's cringy that he gets away with it. 700 upvotes on something that so far has no value to it whatsoever. Nothing here is worthy of appreciation or approval so far. Let's keep going. Obviously getting all fresh models that look as cool as they can would be amazing. But a single model requires tens of hours of modeling, texture, and animating sound work, etc., that has been removed from many people's lives. Oh my god. Time being removed from people's lives? No shit, they're fucking employees of a company getting paid for their time and their expertise. Removed from many people's lives? They fucking went to university and learned how to do all this stuff so that they could spend their time doing this, so that they could get paid. This is when you have to just. Oh, sit, all right, take a step back, he says. This is when you have to just sort of stand back in awe of the bullshit. Oh my god. Like, this is where you think, yep, yeah, fucking idiot teenager posted this. Jesus fuck. The way he phrases it, being removed from people's lives. So on the one hand, they're doing what they're trained to do. They're contributing the best way they can to society, presumably, because they they have skills and this is how they get compensated for them the best, presumably. And then on top of that, this game is going to get sold to millions of people. So every bit of effort that they put into this game is going to be getting appreciated by hundreds of thousands or millions of people. I don't know how many people are going to watch this video I'm making right now. Probably not millions. <laughs> But I'm still going to make sure that it is coherent when I've finished speaking. I'm going to go through this and listen to it and make sure it works. I'm going to spend my time doing that out of respect for the people that are going to be listening to it because I respect myself and my time and my work. This is all bullshit. This is such a ridiculous bullshit framing because it doesn't acknowledge whatsoever that every single bit of effort that developers can be compelled to put into games is going to be appreciated by so many people and it's way better that people put effort into the fucking games themselves than bullshit fucking empty marketing garbage that we cannot appreciate whatsoever after the first time we've watched the stupid video. Work and time and money and effort 
that goes into nothing more than a stupid marketing set piece for which the money and the time and the effort and the value could have been invested into the fucking game and, and had the game improved that way. This is such a shit framing. Fuck this. He goes on. I'm not saying that crunch is necessarily an excuse for game developers to provide incomplete or lazy products, but hell, guys, look at the trailers for two seconds. Fuck the trailers. Fuck the trailers. Oh my god. Alright, first of all, the people making the game and the people that make trailers are often not overlapped very much at all. Sometimes it even gets outsourced to other companies. It's a specialisation and it has nothing to do with the game. The marketing and the quality of the games are completely divorced. Just look at Rome 2. Everyone watched the trailers, the Carthage trailer, got hyped up and excited and then the game fell completely flat and short of those trailers. Did not deliver on those trailers whatsoever. Fucking hell. This is such a stupid thing to say. The game's going to be great and they're putting loads of effort into the game. Just look at the trailers. Fuck the trailers. The trailers are bullshit. Fucking hell. It's 2021. It's fucking marketing. The better the trailers are, the less money that's likely being spent on the actual game. And ostensibly the worse the game is going to be. Ugh. Fuck this. I think them being lazy is pretty off the table. It's easy to demonstrate that they're being lazy. To do that, all you have to do is point to the previous games. Point to games like, as I've done, Rome Total War, Medieval 2, Shogun 2. Look at how they did things. Watch my Total Decline series. It's fucking easy to show how lazy they've been. Just look at how reiterated the games are now. They don't change engines. They don't do new work. They cut features constantly. No naval battles anymore. Sieges are completely fucked. Even after the rework, they're still fucking lazy. Just look at how they, they implemented the siege rework. Watch my video on that. It is extremely lazy, extremely simplified. It's not ambitious. They're not trying properly. And yet more evidence for the fact that they're not trying is the fact that they don't need to try. And how do you know that they don't need to try? Because this fucking post got 700 upvotes at 75% upvoted. That's how you know they don't need to try. That's how you know they haven't tried. If Creative Assembly and Sega are as stingy as the evidence implies, they're going to be completely aware of this supplicative mindset and attitude that festers on this shithole subreddit and percolates through to the rest of the Total War consumer base. And they're going to milk you fuckers for every penny you're worth. Oh, another thing. Rome reheated. Rome reheated was fucking lazy as shit. So fucking lazy, in fact, that Total War YouTubers that were doing Rome Total War as their main gig had to fucking ditch their channels. The main guy behind the Divide and Conquer mod for Third Age Total War, probably the main holdout, the main bastion of the Total War 2 engine of Rome Total War and Medieval 2, he stepped down. And he stepped down right as Rome Reheated came out because he knew that if a Medieval 2 got remastered, it was going to be fucking worthless as well. And there's just no future for Total War because all the effort that gets put into this franchise from the bottom up doesn't get reciprocated from the top down. You have all these fucking consumers just opening their wallets, throwing money at this fucking publisher and developer. You have all these modders investing their lives into making these mods to create these experiences for players. And then on the other side, you have fucking ruthless laziness. Extremely frugal, thrifty developers that don't do anything unless they absolutely have to. There's almost no polish, no nice little details, no real passion that gets put into these games. And if you want to see another example of that, just look at how bugged 3K is. That was a game that got fucking abandoned. Fucking abandoned because it wasn't profitable enough. And that game to this day is just bug ridden. It's absolutely fucking riddled with broken scripting that just totally fucks up the, the narrative that they've tried to put into the game, into the campaign. Shit doesn't fire when it's supposed to. Quest lines are broken. Uh... Faction mechanics just don't work properly. There's so much that is just left fucking broken to shit. And do you know why that's being left broken? We know now. It's been confirmed. They pulled everyone off the fucking game so they could just make a uh, Three Kingdoms 2. Because they're they've got they're actually hiring people to work on that. Now you see posts appearing about 
people with a background in martial arts and animators and 3D people and motion captures, they are currently making another $60 reiteration. So not only are they triple dipping Warhammer with Warhammer 1, 2, 3, selling the same game three times, they're also making a Three Kingdoms 2. So you've had Three Kingdoms, Three Kingdoms 2, and then in five years you'll get Three Kingdoms 3. They are double, triple, quadruple, septuple, heptuple, fucking dipping every single thing they've got to milk as much money to people as possible. And if you're not buying the DLCs, they will just stop making them and then make the next $60 reiteration so they can fucking dip you again. So the suggestion that they're not being lazy is just so fucking naive, so oblivious, so fucking head in the sand, gormless, that I don't even know what to say. Jesus fuck, pay attention. Wake up and smell the coffee, as they say. A few cut corners will not ruin the game. The game's already ruined. <laughs> it's going to be the same as Warhammer 1 and 2, and they, those are already ruined. Especially when it's of tiny little models that don't even look bad. They're just reused. Oh my god. Alright, well, can they reuse the money that we already gave them for Warhammer 1 and 2? It's just reused. I'm just I'm just taking the money from them and then giving it to them again the second or third time. Can they reuse our money so I don't need to pay them again? Look at the state of this. You're fucking giving them money for a product. Why the fuck are you giving someone money for their labour if there isn't labour? What the fuck? They're just reused. Why do we need to pay for it then? If I say to you right now, they're just reselling the same thing, it's reused. Do you approve of me asking for a discount on the game? If they don't have to expend the labour for that percentage of the game, can I have that percentage subtracted from how much I pay for the game? Of course not, don't be so fucking stupid. Please do not harass the developers on Twitter, Discord, Reddit, etc. If during the roster reveal they haven't updated it. Who the fuck is doing that? Has anyone seen this? Has anyone seen people harassing developers on Twitter, Discord, Reddit, etc? I have not seen any of this. I don't know how you would even do that. Are CA just offering up their fucking developers to get sacrificed like a scapegoat again, like they did with the AI guy on Rome 2, where they put him in front of the camera and had him say all this shit that never got followed through on? Is that what's happening? How else would people come across the developers? How would you harass developers? What are they talking about? My assumption is that they're stressed enough as it is. Be respectful. If you're upset, throw up a Reddit post, although there's been plenty of those already. Say your piece and leave it be. Don't tell us what to do. Don't tell anyone what to do. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> oh my god, telling people what to do. See if you're unhappy with people asking for better. How about you take your own advice and shut the fuck up and fuck off? Like, what? <laughs> Double standards. It's The only person that seems to be having any problems right now is you. The only person that seems to be upset is you. Everyone else is doing what they ought to do when... They're being fucking nickled and dimed and wheeler dealered with a half-assed double dip, triple dip, bare bones experience. They're asking for better and they're suggesting that they may not be willing to part for their money with this half-assed cash grab. They're doing what they should do. What the fuck are you doing, on the other hand? You are here posting this. What the fuck are you doing? Like, what the fuck is this? This is such a fucking pathetic, cringy post. People have no fucking self-awareness around here. Jesus fuck. If the game isn't up to your personal standards on launch, refund it. How can they refund something if they're not buying it? People shouldn't buy things and then refund them. They should just not buy them. It's not a try before you buy. It's a, a you, you buy it and then you maybe refund it under certain conditions. That's not the, That should not be the situation. Don't buy it. You need a reason to buy something. And the fact that you can refund it, maybe, is not a good enough reason to go ahead and buy something. Where's the customer confidence? Where the hell is it? Your money slash Steam review will speak your opinion. Just don't take out your disappointment through personal attacks. As I've said, I'm not aware of this. I have not seen this. Are you talking about people interacting directly with PR people? People whose job it is to interact with the community and take the flack? Is that what you're talking about? Are you defending the public face of a company? If that's what's going on here, and that has to be 99% of it, 
then this is just a pathetic, baseless, redundant post. People are getting paid to sit and read comments from angry nerds butthurt about video games. It's an easy fucking job. Holy shit. I fucking do it as part of my YouTuber thing. I read the comments of butthurt nerds all the fucking time. Sometimes they're even directed at me. Sometimes I even get fucking threatened, harassed. Sometimes I even have people do false flagging campaigns. They have an easy fucking job, alright? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, a lot of people seem to have taken this. Alright, so he came back later. This got some traction. People responded to it. 230 comments. Let's refresh, see if it's got any more. 230 comments, yeah. So he got 230 comments or was on the way towards it. He got 700 upvotes or was on the way towards it. And then he edited the comment, the post, to say, Okay, a lot of people seem to have taken this as a bit of a personal attack. So I'd like to reiterate something. I have no issues with people posting public criticisms or even being publicly upset about something you were disappointed in. I am very specifically asking people to not privately harass developers on the Discord that they're very active in or on their Twitter. I'm not aware of this happening. And if it is, why are they in a Discord where they can be exposed to angry internet nerds that are obviously going to be complaining constantly? Because if you're working for Creative Assembly, you know that this is an extremely commercial operation where the margins are required to be at a certain level and we're going to be cutting corners constantly. We've cut so much out of our previous games and we're going to just keep cutting and streamlining games and we're going to keep selling less valuable products for more and more money and we're going to separate the games out into DLCs and just feed it out over a long period of time. We're just making a dopamine drip operation for the worst kind of internet nerds. So obviously they're aware that people are going to be fucking complaining. The people that are wise to the situation and see what Total Wars turned into are going to be complaining. And everyone at Creative Assembly fucking knows that. This is so, this is so stupid. If they're not ready to deal with it, why are they on a Discord by name, under their own name, where people can presumably message them? You can turn off DMs on Discord. You can fucking turn off. It's not difficult to stop people from sending you fucking DMs on Discord. I don't get DMs anymore because I changed a few settings. Pre-release is a really stressful time for game developers and I've seen a lot of resentment about rosters and mo morals brewing. I wanted to say my piece about it in an effort to have ta taken some action against another Naughty Dog situation. Alright, so he's talking about uh, The Last of Us 2 where the game was received quite well by critics but player reviews were a bit more polarised. You had people that were approving of the game and then you had a lot of people that were really unhappy about it and the reason that they were unhappy often didn't really relate to the gameplay itself and that is in a way a lot like this because people are complaining about reskins in a game that is fundamentally just a massive reskin machine. These games are moving art galleries and not really real-time tactics games so the units are all fucking reskins, so who cares? Alright, let's look at the comments. This is often the best part, so let's see what people are saying. Did someone just upvote that right now? Maybe. To be perfectly honest, this got 350 upvotes, so that's about half as much as the thread itself. To be perfectly honest, after the past couple months, I don't think CA gives even the tiniest fuck about the tantrums. Correct. It's not going to affect sales because people complaining on the internet like fucking nerds are going to buy the game anyway so they can complain more, so who cares? The only way you can affect sales is by just refusing to buy the game. The fact that people are even complaining about stuff suggests that they have their ear to the ground and are paying attention to Total War and are invested. So they look at them as just being suckers that have some conflict going on basically. I don't buy Total War games anymore, I complain about them and I've made that clear but all of these nerds on the shithole subreddit that actually give a shit about Warhammer in fucking 2021 they, they're they gonna just see them as suckers, like they've already bought in, they're, they're what would you even say, it's like Americans say they've drank the Kool-Aid so they're fucking like they are hopeless, they are just fucking lost that's how they see them there were a handful of valid critiques, 
but I couldn't blame them in the slightest for refusing to wade through a shitstorm of nerd rage to find it. Well, they will do that. The people whose jobs it is to do that have to do that. They've got to. It's part of their job to keep on top of the situation so they can make good decisions. And then on the other hand, you've got the the actual developers that are working on the games whose job it is to just pay attention to the game itself. And they're going to do this in their spare time. They're going to read forums. They're going to be curious like everyone else. They're fucking human. So they're going to look through threads and forums to try and gauge the situation as well. They're going to talk about it with each other. They're going to presumably come across threads like these and think, holy shit, look at these fucking idiots. My god, they just, they're completely in the clouds. They don't understand what the fuck is going on whatsoever. They're not going to be upset about it. They're going to be thinking... I get paid no matter what, and holy shit, these nerds are so fucking gormless. And then he continues. They'll ask their community partners and read some of the feedback, but this game is nearing the finish line. They don't care about the whining, especially since we all know the people who are bitching the loudest are guaranteed to buy it. Yep, that's what I said. These people are invested, so they're obviously interested in buying it, so who cares? They're a demographic of people that are lucrative, and if they're here bitching... They're here buying, in at least enough numbers, that they're not a problem. They're a good thing. The only concern CA has is maybe how do they step in and moderate the forums a bit differently to try and keep this place as placid and timid and domesticated as possible. That's the only decision they've got to make. Do we have to step in and tell the forum moderators to start banning people and deleting threads, or do we just let it play out and blow over? Is this a shitstorm that will just burn itself out, or do we have to step in and make sure it happens? That's it. In this part here, they'll ask their community partners, are they talking about YouTubers and streamers that are going to give them feedback? Because I don't think they value that whatsoever. I don't think they give a fuck. They never gave a fuck when I was in a Discord with other partners and we were critiquing stuff. They were just there barely paying attention and just trying to make sure that we had copies of the game for launch and were making videos when the game came out because that's what we're there for. We only exist because of our audiences so that we can market the game to them and the entire relationship that YouTubers have with developers like this is one that involves getting the game to them early, getting them to be motivated to make videos, getting lots of views on the videos, having the game be portrayed hopefully as positively as possible and getting lots of people to fucking buy it due to the whole parasocial relationship thing, the the trust that people have in YouTubers that is misplaced almost every single time. That's it. That's the whole point of this. We're not here to do feedback. They don't give a fuck. And and they shouldn't give a fuck because a lot of these YouTubers that play Total War especially are just not even good at the game. They're not even good at the game, so there's no reason to care about what they have to say about the game. They've just somehow managed to accumulate followings where people click on their videos and for whatever reason watch them. So there's no reason whatsoever for YouTubers to be considered at all. It's just not important. The only reason that Creative Assembly have to care about what YouTubers think and what they say is if they do something similar to what I do, where I say things like this to the people that are paying attention to me, and I am able to influence what people think in a way that doesn't help them. Because that will affect their sales. That will definitely affect their sales, and it will affect the, the discourse in the long term. So they have to care about that. They have to pay attention to that kind of thing. But if you're just a regular fucking shellfluencer, you're just a useful idiot, so fuck you. The only thing they consider less than your insight into critiquing the games is your integrity as a person, (laughs) to put it bluntly. Alright, and then someone responds to him and says, This is the correct take and the point of having community partners. Mm, Nope. The YouTubers and content producers have to be in touch and in tune with the community desires because they're competing for eyeballs yep this is true and then have to filter it constructively to see in a manner that preserves the relationship so they can continue to produce said content they have to fucking suck up so they can't be effective they can't critique effectively that is not a healthy relationship where 
productive communication can occur. That's a situation where there's a really fucked up dynamic where you've agreed to be a sellout and a shill and they've agreed to give you crumbs. It is a worthless relationship and this is just deluded. This is so fucking naive and puppy-eyed. This is not what the relationship is like between these kinds of toxic game developers and these kinds of spineless shillfluencers that I've already brought up in my video, what's it called again? The Great Total War Shilling Operation. I'll link all these in the description. So this is naive. Maybe in like 2013, like before Rome 2 happened, this would have been true. Like this part here. Uh, YouTubers like Prince of Macedon and some other, some other people around his time, his contemporaries before Rome 2, that were getting involved with market events, they would have been in touch with the uh, YouTube commenters and the Total War community, and they would have been motivated by the games and into the games and the gameplay, and they would be there for the games with the idea of making cool videos of cool gameplay, and thinking that they can use their platform for good, maybe thinking about how to bring up to CA in a way that's productive and constructive. But the thing is, they all would have noticed that they were wasting their fucking time, just like I did immediately. At least in the case of CA, I've had feedback that I've been given to other developers in the past where I've thought that, wow, I helped, that, that actually improved the game. Triple A games. But I have never... I had a lot to say when I was having interaction briefly with creative assembly on their discord and not a single fucking time did i think wow this thing that i thought of and that is insightful and is useful and will improve the game has been taken on board and will actually improve the game i always just felt like i was wasting my fucking time and i guarantee you that that's the case with everyone i've had multiple other total war youtubers sometimes even russian ones say the exact same fucking thing they were they were just wasting their fucking time the only way a youtuber can influence these games is by publicly saying this shit. Nothing that you say behind closed doors matters a single fuck. You have to get a loudspeaker and fucking shout it as loud as possible and then have the whole internet parrot what you said and then they'll start paying attention if it starts to harm their sales. That's the only way. CA will take the time to explain things to the community partners because they're actual human beings invested in a working relationship and not a gibbering horde trying to yell at the top of their lungs and hope that the community partners will carry the water to the masses for them. No, this is just completely divorced from reality. This is not true at all, and we've already had it confirmed by YouTubers that they just get fucking ignored. That's part of why Melkor just abandoned Total War, I'm quite sure, because, as he said himself, they don't understand the community. That's a guy that was the biggest advocate of CA until Rome reheated came around. He was actually pushing back against me, telling him how it was, in order to maintain this attitude of, well, we need to believe in CA, we need to trust CA. But he's admitted that he was completely fucking wrong and that CA just don't give a shit. Uh, they don't understand the community. They don't give a shit about YouTubers and feedback that they give. So this is just completely delusional. This is absolutely just clueless. CA is not plugged into this forum or the wider community. That would be and is just noise. Well... I'll put it this way, right? See, when I started critiquing Total War about a year ago, I got a lot of immediate pushback from angry nerds from this shithole subreddit, and that sort of snowballed into a smear thread that occurred on here that got 10,000 upvotes, and as soon as that thread went up, Legend of Total War started to explain who I was and my history, and when he did that, Immediately, one of CA's staff turned up in his chat and tried to reframe the situation. You can go back to, I don't know, I think it's like the end of August, and you can see CA's, hang on, I'm going to find the job description. Yep, yeah, their lead influencer manager person, he immediately fucking turned up in Legend of Total War's chat and started intervening in how he was explaining to his chat who I was. I'm going to find it, actually. I'm going to find it, hang on. Um, yeah, that's a shame. Because Voland is, like, a really, really good Shogun 2 player. Like, really, really good. M maybe even the best. Um, certainly better than me at Shogun 2. 
And it's a shame if somebody like that is is blacklisted because I think he has a lot to offer the community. Even though I don't personally like him, I think I think he does have a lot to offer the community. And I don't think we should ban people just because we don't like them. But you know, there's there's acceptable behavior and unacceptable behavior. You did what you did. All right, so that was the complete smear, and he responded to it there, and he was being being quite quite nice in in some ways, but uh, other at other points he was being not so nice, and then he made correction statements on that. So I don't have any problem with him at the moment, but in the chat, if we fast forward, he talks about me a lot. I think here, like it goes on for quite a while. Let's find it. The Reddit isn't isn't uh, isn't innocent. People got to learn on the Reddit that if you harass a content creator too much, like we are human beings, and each of us has a breaking point. Also, oh, this part was really funny. I thought I'm gonna play this too. Now, because of, now this is probably what's gonna happen because Voland has now been banned from the Reddit. People are gonna slander him on that Reddit forever. You know, oh Voland, he does this, 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 and it's probably just full on lies. <laughs> Alright, so he said some things that were nice, but then he also said some things that were really not so nice and that I were, was convinced he was actually just making up and lying about. Because that's what fucking everyone was doing at the time. It was obviously a completely fabricated, engineered situation. So I assumed that he was just part of it. He was just joining in, doing his part in that whole thing, which really pissed me off. We straightened out, but at the time, I was pissed off. So he... I think noticed that I was getting really annoyed with him and he offered to have me come on to his stream which I wasn't interested in and when he did that I think after CA saw that and after they saw what he had said about me yesterday because they sat and surely fucking listened to his streams 24-7 because he's the biggest streamer uh, they I think just completely shot themselves and decided to do this a day later this is a day after where I got smeared and he brought me up and explained who I was to his stream. So he explained his whole stream that I was like the Shogun to veteran from when Total War YouTube was actually worthwhile. And then this happened. Um, and that's totally fine if he doesn't want to either. But... Look. You know, we've got <laughs> 2,162 people here. <laughs> You know, if he wants to, we can. Not that I want to. Because he got banned from the Total War subreddit. And Creative Assembly cut ties with him. And as somebody who has had their ties cut with CA, sometimes it's not fair. Sometimes it is. I don't know. It's not my story to tell. Nope. We can dodge this one. Dodge. Move, 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 move. And didn't really dodge it. I should note that part of why I was not remotely interested in doing something like that was that I was convinced he had fucking lied about me still at this point. So there was no way I was going to fucking go on his stream and have him presumably just pile on with his entire audience that I was convinced was just garbage because it's a... Uh, a bit of a subsection of the shithole subreddit itself, so there was no way I was interested in doing that. I was just watching what was happening and, and thinking what I was going to do, and I'm glad I did. My power is yours. Oh, hey Josh, how's it going, dude? So he's noticed it, and now he's thinking, what the fuck? This doesn't happen much. I don't think it happens very much. He's thinking, he's like, what the fuck's going on? And then he's realised, I think, now. He's a little bit concerned. Like, why the fuck is... How's it going? I'm sure you've been busy over the past few days. Yep. <sighs> Fun times. I imagine... Eh, I don't want to say too much. Oh no, stay away! If it's one thing that kills sisters more than anything, it's poison winds. Uh, poison wind mortars. Get rid of that crap. Get rid of it.
<laughs> Get rid of the poison wind mortars. Alright, so two minutes pass and there's basically nothing going on. And then he posts this and explains. So that's why he turned up. He turned okay. up to Josh, post Josh that. Josh is here all the time. Uh, well, not like all the time, but he's here quite often. So yeah, they're asking why is he here, and this is why he's here. He's here to just post this. So... <laughs> to say that CA don't pay attention to forums and to what's going on is just gormless, because look, you've got Johnny on the spot here, immediately posting his prepared statement in response to a YouTuber talking me up in a way and them shitting themselves and realising that I was actually a pretty big deal and they've completely fucked up and that's become really fucking obvious to them over the past year <laughs> so there you go it's undeniable to say that CA is not plugged into this forum or the wider community when they obviously spy on streams and micromanage relationships between between youtubers <laughs> come on come on <laughs> smarten up smarten up people misunderstand the route to action yelling at the top of your lungs on reddit isn't where change comes from says you that's how you get improvements by suggesting that you're less likely to buy a game if it has problems that you can name and ask to be fixed because they might think oh yeah the actual customer is right the actual customer might be right the community partners often are saying many of the same things well if they say that then you definitely don't trust it the only people you can trust are people that are not part of total war and people that are part of total war but obviously are motivated by something other than views and money people like me. <laughs> There's a massive difference in tone and to some extent content between what the community partners say and what random redders say. Their opinions matter to CA because those relationships matter and because they have the basic common sense to understand that there are certain realities in game development that necessitate compromise. This sub in general is absolutely oblivious to how the game, engine and developers actually work. Yep, we've seen that already. Wait, aren't you one of them? No, 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 that's the other guy. Yep, that guy, this guy is uh, so far so good. Worse yet, they don't even seem to want to learn because if they learn, they might have some empathy and feel bad about their absurdist bitching and moaning. Mm. The tone is also different. The content creators have to tiptoe around CA. The tone is also different because the content creators have to tiptoe around CA. After all, Irk, one of the current content creators spoke badly about a CA title in the past and was blacklisted for a while by CA because of it. That was Legend of Total War way back when Thrones Britannia came out, but he did go quite far in a lot of the things he said, including literally telling people not to buy the game, which isn't exactly a message CA are willing to help promote. Yep, so there you go. It's a double standard. If you tell people that you don't like the game and not to buy it, you are not going to be given free keys. And if you tell people that the game is good and to buy it, even when it isn't, then you're going to be given more keys for more shit games that are completely worthless. And that's another way that this franchise just gets dragged down by the fucking ankles into the dirt. It's a vicious cycle. Honestly, I respect Legend a lot for that. Yep, if he was being honest, then that's virtuous, that's good. Should always approve of that, and he, I think he was. If a game is shit, he should be allowed to say that. If they didn't want him to be saying that, they shouldn't have made such a rough game. Exactly. You're stifling critics. It's a carrot and stick. It's manipulative as fuck. It should be illegal to do that. It should be illegal. That would be like getting fired for calling out malpractice. That would be a bit like if you called out your boss for not behaving properly in the workplace and then he fires you for it. You, you would have recourse if that happened. If you were right, of course. If you were right that they were doing something wrong. If they were bad at their job. And then this continues. I do remember at least one high profile case of someone essentially being shot out. I don't remember his name though, but from his own videos whining about it, I got the impression it came down much more to his ego and personality than any commentary by him. But you're right, community members exist to promote the product, this can temper what kind of criticism they offer publicly. And then 
people start speculating on who it is, and it could have been any of us. Like there's there's been so many people at this point that have been unhappy with Total War, and have maybe even critiqued it, and then got shut out. It happened to me. Happened to Legend of Total War. In some sense, it also happened to Republic of Play, and Prince of Macedon. And then someone here said. Prince of, didn't Prince of Mastodon get blacklisted because he wanted to get back with CA and they told him to pound sand because he wasn't active anymore and only complained about the recent games? Well, what actually happened here, I think, is that they just suddenly stopped sending him the games. He's made a lot of videos on this at this point, and I've covered this. I made a video for this video series, Escapades of the Shithole subreddit, on the unjust treatment of Prince of Mastodon by this subreddit, so you can go to that video for this. He did complain, yes, but what generally ticked C.A. off was him being a prima donna and bitchy about it. Well, it's more just him being open about it, having transparency. Melkor tried to keep it secret what happened between him and Creative Assembly, which is to do your audience a disservice. If your audience is deceived about the relationship that you have with the game publisher, then that is really dodgy. There's a bit of a conflict of interest there. There's there's a non-disclosure. You have to be transparent about the relationship you have with developers when you may actually be influence people into buying or not buying their games. In the interest of disclosure, you have to be open about that. And this is the thing. This is such a really shifty, skeevy situation. It's really questionable in terms of the ethics of it. So what happened here was... Prince of Macedon simply made it public knowledge that they had started to cut him out. Oh, that's another one, Sanjetsu. There's another one, they did that to him too. They simply just shut him out without warning or explanation or even made things up. The way they behave is really... Ugh, it's, it's pretty rotten, considering, especially in the case of Prince of Macedon, that this guy helped to build what Total War is today with his massive YouTube influence early on. It's really fucked up. This sub also likes to wildly overblow the complaints. You're acting like every other post on this sub is someone threatening CA dev lives. Yep, this subreddit is just an absolutely fucking worthless shithole of just lies, fabrications, hyperbole, everything. It's a fucking lunatic asylum of fucking spergy, nerdy, neckbeard, warhammer fanboys at this point. A lot of them teenagers as well. Too many of them teenagers, like loads. Are you really not seeing the irony and exaggerating your accusations of exaggeration? I did not claim every other post is death threat, so let's try to at least act like adults. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Spotted the fucking kid. The bar for respectful critique is not, not a death threat. The complaints in this sub become idiotic whining when people start accusing C of laziness. Nah, you, you completely lost me now. I saw a hint of this earlier. Or in some truly idiotic comments, some sort of animus against certain factions or players. Yeah, this is where you get into the the spergy, neckbeard, no life bullshit, where people have extremely strange attachments, obsessions. It's like uh, it's like weeps or fucking furries or it's like th these these people that have unusual traits in terms of their psychology. This is a demographic of people that have a lot of issues, I'll put it that way. Clearly you're part of the problem, but it's not that big of a problem. It's easy enough for CA to tune this sort of horseshit out and focus on their work. Yeah, it is. They don't even give a fuck. They know exactly what this is. It's a nickel and dime operation that is, in fact, lazy as fuck. And this is part, part and parcel of dealing with it. They accepted it years ago. They signed up for this nearly a decade ago now and this is all just to be expected you're being milked occasionally you'll complain about it big deal you're still gonna buy the fucking game so who cares the problem is that if most of these redditors were sat down face to face with a the developer they would absolutely not be nearly this aggressive and condescending in their critique because they would have a human in front of them who has priorities would like to go home after work and actually understands how the game development process goes Oh wow, that's really profound. Wow. How many people would dare accuse a developer to their face that the reason the game isn't delivering exactly what that player wants is specifically because the developer's laser greedy and not any other host of reasons? I like how we've changed from creative assembly to individual 
particular person. See how we're anthropomorphizing a company into being a person with hopes and dreams in a completely baseless, irrational way. Nobody here is fucking going after individual developers for not doing their job properly. If they're not doing their job properly, the company fucking fires them. The tone of criticism can very easily change feedback to vitriol. Alright, see this word vitriol? This is one of those weasel words that gets employed by people that are trying to make you feel emotion when there's almost always no reason to get emotional whatsoever. It's an emotional appeal. Other words along this line are toxic, bile, uh, asshole, asshat. These are all whimpering whinge words that you see on this subreddit all the time. Also, opinion. See, when someone invokes the word opinion, they're always trying to do something really dodgy and shifty. Always be suspicious when people start saying the word opinion around you when you're in an argument. As someone who also works in an industry with some very passionate fans who can get out of hand, creatives have absolutely no compunction to listen to people spew garbage when there's work to be done. They do anyway. I can give you countless examples of developers sitting on Twitter posting links to people critiquing their games. Developers do it all the time. Creative Assembly have presumably no presence on Twitter, though, so they're one of the least exposed developers to critique that I can think of. They're very insulated. Other developers are on Twitter and are posting and acknowledging and are posting about and acknowledging fan critique. Sometimes they'll even post reviews of their games and then say look at all of these people in the comments responding to this or they'll have some other insight about it. I see it all the time. I followed game developers on Twitter and I see it all the time. What I never see though is people actually trying to go after developers on an individual basis. You never see that. At least not in the case of Creative Assembly. Are you sure? I've seen Indie Pride and GBOG get pretty hot on multiple issues. Sure aren't going to speak to developers like that, but doesn't mean they're not disappointed or mad. And yeah, of course. <laughs> I've always been forthright about what I say, and I've sometimes even had developers that are grateful for it. It's valuable. Developers that have healthy attitudes value it. Some developers even seek it out, especially when it comes to players that are really good at their games. I've had direct experience of this. Just never with Creative Assembly. <laughs> never. Which is remarkable. It doesn't matter how good you are at their games or how insightful you are about how their games work. They don't give a shit about what you think. To be fair, their community partners gave them a lot of feedback about how the Forge of Death was not going to work out well with players amongst other things throughout the years, and just ignored it. I've heard this, actually. This sounds familiar. I've heard that YouTubers have complained about things in Total War games, modern Total War games, and have pretty much just been ignored. So that's that may be part of why they just don't bother. The thing about the whining as well is that it burns for a few weeks, then is immediately forgotten and replaced by the next thing the sub fixates upon. Yep, and that's the problem with the dynamics of a fucking subreddit like this. It's all dictated by algorithms. The shit that rises to the top is the most ephemeral temporary shit, and it burns out, it fizzles out, and stops getting upvotes, and then it stops snowballing, and then it can't possibly be seen ever again. <laughs> it's just how it works. It's all the heat of the moment. And it's all algorithm determined. Oh, without doubt. They stopped caring about anything in the sub about a year ago, I would guess. Right after the Great Forge of Death, ridiculous drama, along with my unit cards, equally ridiculous outcry. Hence why. Don't need to say both of these words. Either one is sufficient, because they both mean the same thing. They never post here anymore. Not seen it for a long time. I remember when developers used to drop comments and posts regularly. It's probably why Grace left. Oh, yep. She's gone. Community manager's gone. I assume they decided to draw away from social media interaction and more towards posting blogs and trailers with no recourse. I noticed that towards the end of her time she was barely posting. Even blogs and announcements were being posted by randoms. I don't blame them. After years of entitled whiners bashing every tiny perceived imperfection, I would have given up here too. <laughs> yeah, because that's why... They were posting here, 
because they were trying to turn this place into something good as opposed to just being a fucking extension of the marketing department cultivating a soft consumer base that they can use to market more efficiently why would they pay people to patrol this place and do this stuff if it wasn't bringing in money it's actually a good thing if see you pull out of this fucking subreddit it means that they've determined it's no longer profitable to try and manipulate this subreddit with staff presence which is a good thing it means the subreddit has some fucking hope Yeah, that reminds me of Blizzard drones. They'll screech at the smallest of things and then buy it. Yep. I won't be buying it until I know it's good. Five down votes. <laughs> Some people have standards. Yep, not many. Not many. I know what you mean, but to be honest, I think people who take it a bit far are going to do so anyway, regardless of such posts as this. True, but it doesn't mean a nice post like this or there wouldn't cheer up a dev or community manager that's in the trenches right now. In the trenches, what the fuck? They're they're just getting paid. If they think they'll get paid more somewhere else and they'll they'll like it more somewhere else, they'll just change jobs. It's not like they're doing this out of charity, like what the fuck? They went to uni, got a degree, maybe got a master's, went to work at the studio that would pay them the most money. That's like the main fucking consideration. And also, if they were doing this out of passion, then Ending up at Creative Assembly is not where you would want to be. <laughs> Even YouTubers that have done this, that have fl there's a YouTuber that got a job at Creative Assembly and then he was just like, yep, that's it, I'm out of the industry now, I think. <laughs> I think he had enough, he saw that it was just cancer, that they're not actually trying to make g good games, that it's not dignified, and he left. Imagine your dream job turns into a nightmare. Yeah, I fully support the sentiment, but I don't think any sort of reasonable explanation or request for Cam is going to suddenly and completely bring some guy to emotional maturity. Five minutes after he's been seeking out CA devs on Twitter and Discord to call them lazy dumb cunts who deserve to rot in the DMs. Yep, it's just outlandish. Everything about this is absurd. The idea that people even do this, the idea that people who do this are going to be placated, the idea that people who do this are going to be charmed into acquiescence and tranquility by a fucking nerdy five paragraph cunt post yeah no way the fact op had to edit his comment to explain how asking people to be respectful to developers isn't personal attacking them really says all you need to know well it says that people are not really very stalwart in what they think like people are are easily swayed and don't really stand by their own statements and are not really effective around here it's just another way that this sub is infected with weakness People can't even post a five paragraph post that everyone is supposed to read without fucking up and having to edit it. Unless you're trolling you, the venomous stuff is downvoted and never appears on your pages. This works real time but also dissuades trolls long term as they don't receive the attention other mediums afford them. Down votes. I support your sentiment. Harassing devs is never okay, but I've yet to see someone to actually insult or threaten an employee, as is constantly claimed by the sub. Yep, it's fucking imagined. Prove it ever happens, prove it. Calling a design decision bad, criticising the largest UK developer cutting corners despite making ever higher profits, calling out reusing six year old assets and the marketing that promises stuff it repeatedly fails to deliver isn't the same as insulting people. Most of the things that are criticised are the direct results of a company cutting corners and using a too small budget. Guess who suffers most from this circumstance? Right, employees. So I fail to see how confusing criticising a company versus insulting individual devs is going to improve anything. It's certainly not going to help employees working in an industry famous for forcing devs to work overtime. Yep, exactly. And I went over this a little bit at the start. It's just a completely absurd way to frame the situation. And then someone responds with... Oh, what do you even call this? Just a bootlicker? A fucking schizo post, basically. I, I think there's just so many schizo posts around here. Holy shit, 49 down votes in response to 100 up votes. Wow, we're looking at that one too. The problem with this community is every time C expands the scope of total war, that last happened in 2007, 8, 9. Empire Total War was the last time they tried to expand scope and they completely fucked it up and have been retreating and shriveling ever since. They are creatively bankrupt and they don't expand scope. Just look at the siege rework. Completely 
devoid of scope and creativity. Every time you see expand scope, people just raise their expectations ever higher, even higher. No, they don't. Bullshit. Never. Literally just a few months ago, people were expecting we'd only get a single mono god faction. Yet now that we're getting four distinct mechanically complete demon factions, people are furious at CA for cutting corners because one of them is doesn't have a unit of Chaos Warriors. Terrible writing. By every measurable metric, Total War 3 will be the largest Warhammer release they've ever done by a simple astounding, simply astounding margin. No, by... F- name one metric, what the fuck is this? I mean, for Christ's sake, we're getting an entire siege and map rework. An entire siege and map rework, it's fucking crap. Six brand new factions. Counting factions is for fucking plonkers. Oh my god, if you do this, if you engage in this faction counting bullshit, you are the worst kind of fucking rube that gets shit shivelled down your mouth. Oh my god. People were doing this for Rome Reheated and no one no one ended up giving a shit that you can play as the fucking Romano-British or the Ostrogoths or whatever the fuck. Who gives a shit about this? It means nothing. Just counting factions. Just numbers. Fuck your number of factions. Always fuck your number of factions. Shogun 2 had basically one fucking faction in the whole game and it was fucking amazing to play that whole game. It was so fucking good. Fuck this nonsense meaningless crap it's just a th- it's like it's like people always say it's a massive puddle with no depth whatsoever just completely shallow you can tiptoe around in it all you want but you can't do anything else rising to eight if you count the ogres and demons undivided and where every single one of them is mechanically f- f- more complex than any release faction we've ever seen a fucking bullshit Oh my god, absolutely deluded nonsense. I have no idea why people are trying to hold accountable a video game developer like they're fucking me- Oh, I uses the wrong there, that's why I couldn't read that and had to start again. Like they're fucking members of your elected government. Look at this kid trying to be profound. Oh my god. Holy shit, maybe if you guys applied this energy to your lives you'd feel more fulfilled. Well, you're the one here getting fucking emotionally invested in what people on the internet are saying. Like, holy shit, can... You even started this out by saying, holy shit. You're projecting. This is nothing but fucking projecting. This is... Schizo-posting with projection. So you're not on a video game subreddit penciling in every perceived wrong you come across. Like, holy shit, discussion is drowned out about older titles and current titles. Everything is jerk and counter-jerk. Fuck. Fuck you. Ah yes, it's one of the y'all spend too much time on video game subreddit, it's not me. I'm just obsessively defending a multi-million dollar company on a video game subreddit, exactly. First look at the definition of holding accountable, because I'm not doing that. I'm not demanding that they step down or get in front of a court. I'm not asking for a subpoena, nothing. I'm criticising them, or much rather, I simply state how I feel about something. That doesn't mean it's all I have in my life, unless I forgot you're only allowed to speak your mind when it's the most important thing in your life. Yep, so... Grounded response to a complete fucking schizo post of a bootlicker, basically. That's that's all I can conclude of this person. Literally everything you complain about applies to yourself. Yeah, exactly. You're the one here who has to pencil out every perceived wrong because someone else suggests that corner cutting isn't okay with them. You're the one who gets worked up about someone else's opinion of a video game on Reddit. And you're literally a part of the jerk and counter jerk that you hate so much. <laughs> just totally destroyed him. <laughs> Gotta just hand it to this guy. He called him out. <laughs> Perfect. Fucking destroyed. No amount of money speeds up the development of a project or and, and, and look, no response. He just got absolutely demolished. He didn't even delete his post, which you usually see quite a lot. Usually when people get fucking humiliated like this, they just delete their, their username from it, but he left it up. The only credit I can give to him is that he is accountable, in fact, for what he said, because his fucking name is there. In the sense that anonymous internet names offer accountability to the extent they do. No amount of money speeds up development of a project or guarantees quality results. Bullshit! And this is the op, the original poster. No amount of money speeds up the development of a project or guarantees quality results. Alright, so do you know what we're going to do? All projects from now on, every project that's in development, we're going to suspend all budgets immediately because this guy on the internet that posted this fucking ridiculous thread with 700 upvotes. He chipped in again down here to declare that he's determined that 
whenever you're putting money into a project, it's pointless. It doesn't make it complete faster. It doesn't improve its quality. It doesn't do that. This is what this guy says. So says he that it does not. By insulting the company and demanding more effort, more work and more time spent on minuscule nitpicks, you're really directing those complaints at human employees and social network managers, all of whom are already mentally taxed by the workload of such massive of such a massive and expensive project that they often aren't being properly compensated for. True. But that's because of the fucking company and the corporate capitalism power structures that we have. That's not because of the fucking customers who are the people that can be actually affected by the quality of the product. The most important people in the equation, the fucking customers. The point of my post was not that criticising companies or employees is always bad, but that specifically being disrespectful and directly messaging employees, which are active and easy to reach on programs like Discord and Twitter. Oh my god, <laughs> is, is there a wink wink here? What the fuck? about minor grievances and calling people who are genuinely overworked lazy is bad and I would like them to not to do it. Who cares what you would like? Fuck off. Criticising developers for anything you dislike is, of course, perfectly fine. I just want people to please be respectful of a, of a group of artists. Artists? <laughs> it's artisans. Get the right words. They're fucking artisans engaging in very deliberate, passionate crafting. Fucking artists. Come on, you're not even using the right words here for your your bullshit post, who constantly face hate and anger on a daily basis. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> you fucking schizo, oh my god. The post itself was specifically inspired by this chaos warrior nonsense, which to me seems like such a small issue for people to be so consistently upset with. I was worried people would see something they disliked on the roster reveal and move the resentment from Reddit posts to personal attacks on the developer. Oh my god, so you were heading them off? Look at this guy sitting here, the only thing in the way, the only obstacle standing between these developers and all of those that would wish harm to them. What a hero. What a fucking paragon. There isn't such a thing as criticising a company in any direct way. The company's That company is made up of human beings, and when you direct resentment towards even, say, Walmart, the company doesn't care. The social media manager sees it, maybe some PR manager sees it, and it gets relayed to business managers rarely who then decide what to do about it. Alright, I'm not taking any fucking exposition off of you when you're obviously LARPing as an adult, as a fucking gormless kid. If the big stink is big enough, the passion is not translated to the people who make the decisions. The disrespect and anger is only given to the first person to read it, who usually has nothing to do with what you're complaining about. So a bit of respect and calm measure criticism ultimately achieves the same amount without mentally taxing some random employee. What the fuck is this guy's issue? What's happened to this guy that he's motivated to say this? Like, what motivates this kind of a sentiment? It seems like he's got some issues he has to work through. Unresolved shit. And then someone responds to his absolutely ludicrous statement about money not speeding up or improving projects with... What? Maybe not guaranteed, strictly speaking, but hiring more and more talented people can make a project move more quickly and produce better results. Yeah, which is why everyone fucking does it. That's that's how, that's how you... <laughs> if, that, if that wasn't the case, then projects would just elapse to completion completely randomly without any personnel or effort. It would just be a random quantum event. It would be like fucking subatomic particles just bouncing around in space. <laughs> Projects would just appear and be completed out of nowhere. Fucking nuts. Oh my god. By insulting the company and demanding more effort, more work and more time spent on a minuscule. Oh, and then someone takes this apart paragraph by paragraph and says, Nobody's insulting the company here and demanding quality in a product should be encouraged. Sorry, but tough shit. Co consumers need to have standards in the market. Otherwise, they will drop. Exactly, this is the thing. This game presumably is going to be bought by hundreds of thousands or millions of people, whereas this game is made by a few dozen. It's a completely asymmetrical relationship and they get paid for it. The game quality matters way more than anything else because it touches the lives of fucking so many people. Hundreds of thousands or millions of people are going to be affected by whether this game is good or bad. It should be fucking good. 
it should be expended. The money and the time and the effort has to be expended and the customers have to make it happen. It's up to them to do it. You're the only one with power and most of your power comes from your fucking money. And in the case of Total War, that's where all of your power comes from. The threat of not paying for it. As for your sob story about it being taxing for community managers dealing with feedback, that's also tough shit. It's literally their job. Exactly. They're paid to do it. If they're good at their job, which they should be, otherwise they shouldn't be in the job, then it won't bother them. Fuck's sake. If I was a community manager for a game company and I had to deal with this shit, it would not affect me one fucking bit. Not a bit. I would be getting paid to do that shit and that I would be doing for free. <laughs> I'd do that shit for free when I read my own fucking comments. It's fucking hilarious to sit and read the comments of angry internet nerds on a daily basis. I'm never gonna get bored of it. Fucking never. It's so fucking hilarious to me. I hope I never stop. It's fucking great. I've got friends on YouTube that I made outside of Total War because I've had periods where I play other better games and one of the highlights of my week quite a lot quite often is when we exchange the most asinine or ridiculous or amazing comments we get in our videos and laugh at them together. It's fucking great and I really hope it never ends. The same way it's the waiter's job at a restaurant to handle customer complaints when their food comes out not to par, exactly. You're paying for a service, you should get what you pay for, it's only fair. Fuck's sake. You should, if you're unhappy with the product, you, you're well within your rights to complain. It's only decent, fuck's sake. You have a responsibility to complain so that the fucking standard is maintained so that the next person doesn't get fucked over. This is why we have regulations, laws, regulatory bodies. Because we want to maintain standards for people. Because the customer and their experience is fucking important. It's important to people that they get what they pay for. People people live a fucking monotonous, miserable existence doing a 95 so that they can afford money for these things. They should get what they fucking pay for when they fucking pay for it. And then at the very least, after they've paid for it and it's fucking shite, they should be allowed to fucking complain and get it off their chest. Fuck's sake. Give them some restitution. Let them fucking complain. These people have all paid hundreds of dollars already to this company. Let them fucking complain to this shit company. As for their workload being taxing, that's not our problem. That's CAs and Sega's responsibility to make sure their staff aren't overwhelmed. Exactly. Exactly. We're just fucking commenters. We're internet typers. It's not our fault if anything is wrong here. We are contributing to this whole enterprise by offering our money. We are fucking investors. We're putting up capital. Some, some of the fucking idiots around here are even stupid enough to pre-order. We are putting in time and money. We are fucking benefactors. We are fucking angel investors. Fuck off. Yes, we should be civil and not take it out on the community managers, and I understand the ports of being charitable, but this sub has been plenty charitable, unless you think silly memes making fun of CA's cut content abusive. Yep. And now we're talking about the schizo accusations of harassment that hasn't occurred. That's something that I've noticed on this subreddit. There's a lot of accusations of harassment that fly around that have absolutely no evidence for them whatsoever. I was accused of harassing people and I've never harassed anyone. So they're doing it again. They, it's a pathological thing. They're obsessed with harassment and they pathologically fabricate harassment accusations. It's compulsive. So he responds to this part with, You readily admitted you haven't seen it here. What are you doing exactly? Playing some weird e-police role for your favourite company to make sure a community you're ignorant of keeps in line? Exactly. And then he says... Ah, here it is. I'll be honest. I think you care less about people being civil here to the devs and are more concerned about people criticising a game you're overexcited about. Yep, and this is a big part of it. These are just over-invested Spergay Warhammer fanboy bootlickers. The worst kind of people you can think of, pretty much, on the worst game community on the internet that I can think of. This whole, please don't attack the devs guys is poisoning the well nonsense. Yeah, yeah, that's something they do a lot, poison the well. He's caught it, he's caught, he's pulling them up on it, good on him. If you think that the Chaos Warrior complaints are overreactions, that's fine, you're free to disagree and make a thread here debating the issue, but don't muddy the waters with these bogus harassment accusations. That's, he's called it out, like this is it. They're constantly muddying the waters. When I turned up here, I think I even used this phrase, muddy the waters. I use this phrase all the time against bootlicker, warhammer, fanboy, shitheels on the internet. Muddying the waters. When people say something like, 
you blocked him just because he disagreed with you, that's muddy in the waters because the disagreement is often irrelevant to the blocking. It's usually because they've done way more than fucking disagree, and disagree is one of those fucking weasel words I was talking about earlier, along with vitriol. It's a word that people hide behind. It's motivated. Bogus harassment accusations save them for communities where this is actually happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he comes back again. Oh my god. He comes back and he just gets downvoted to hell even though he's the guy that posted the fucking thread, which is embarrassing. So that shows that his narrative is superficially appealing, but when he has to actually substantiate it, he gets fucking downvoted into oblivion. And that sums up this thread, I think. I don't think we really need to go any further. That shows what the situation is. This is a bullshit thread that gets 75% upvotes on it, but when it gets remotely scrutinised, it immediately just gets fucking downvoted to hell. And that's probably what... Oh my god, look at this. Oh my god, downvoted again. Downvoted again. Oh my god, every time he talks, he just gets downvoted with his bullshit. Every single down. Mass downvoted for not doing something. Yeah, see, like, he's just fucking downvoting. He's just getting fucking endlessly downvoted. Yep, downvotes everywhere. Downvotes everywhere. 23 down. Oh, he survived that time. 25 down. He got some upvotes that time. So, yep, I think we can end this here. This is another example of. The shithole subreddit just being completely deluded. One schizo turns up with really bizarre motivations to farm karma to White Knight, his favourite game developer. He has some success immediately with upvotes, just like what happened with the guy that tried to smear me on here. But once it gets investigated to any extent, once it is exposed to any scrutiny or pushback, it just fucking collapses. And that reflects, I think, the state of Total War on the whole. Superficially appealing, you might buy the game, but when you actually think about how the games work and try to do more than just look at the cool monsters, the spell is broken and you see these games for what they are. Products. And you can see how this is not a normal conversation about a game. This is not people talking about gameplay. There's no gameplay being discussed at any point in this thread. We're here for games, to play games, and on this thread, with 200 fucking comments, there's just nothing being remarked on that has anything to do with anything that matters. And what matters to these people, what should matter to these people at the very least? Having fun, playing a game that engages with them in a way that is meaningful, that they can have fun doing, and feel good about themselves for doing. That's what making games should be all about. Making challenges that stimulate people, engage them, and give them memorable experiences. But no one here seems invested in that. And this is why Total War is fucked. Because this is going to just get worse and worse. Thanks for watching everyone. I uh, had to comment on this because it was so fucking bizarre. And I think I might have even been brought up on here at some point. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can find anyone bringing me up. Because that's the that's the last thing I do. I try and find someone that in invokes me. Nah, I don't think I was brought up on here. All right, well that's it. See you next time for the next one.